We're talking about criteria that you should have in choosing a political candidate. We're talking about the non-negotiables. We've already talked about euthanasia, contraception, homosexuality, embryonic experimentation. Now we'll talk about what is considered probably the most important criteria, and that is abortion. My friends, abortion is wrong. Since Roe v. Wade 1973, there have been close to 52 million surgical abortions in this country, in the United States of America. Not to mention many more chemical abortions. Therefore, political leaders should always try to foster what is the common good. Our founding father said this, Every individual is endowed with inalienable rights, which are life and liberty, as well as the pursuit of happiness. We believe very firmly that life begins at the very moment of conception. And the moment, at the very moment of conception, God himself intervenes, and he infuses an immortal soul and that individual, and that soul will live for all eternity. In God, only God has the right to take away life. Therefore, with Job we say, the Lord gives, the Lord takes away, blessed be the name of the Lord. Therefore, we should always try to promote the gospel of life. Political leaders have a moral obligation to foster life. And it's our obligation, in imitation of Jesus Christ, to always defend the weakest, the most poor, the most vulnerable, the sickest, the most infirm. infirm. Who, is the most in, who is the most vulnerable, dependent member in the human society? The most vulnerable, dependent member in human society is the little child that's in the womb. And sad to say that the most common operation in this country is abortion. The most dangerous place for the human person is in the womb of the mother. That's why John Paul II, in his wonderful encyclical, Evangelium Vitae, in English, the Gospel of Life, encourages us to always defend human life. From the moment of conception until natural death, human life is sacred because it comes from God who is the author of all life.